Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Don. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and to love as companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and applause to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder, wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peace of peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You must also be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Now, brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Good morning. Good morning. A specific visual image of dawn is engraved on my memory. If you've ever arrived at Union Station by bus or train, you'll remember emerging from the hallway that runs beneath the train tracks and into the majestic Art Deco waiting room. Any time I pass through Union Station over the last several years, I'd look across the waiting room at that point. If I was lucky, Don would be at work that day. His graceful profile was unmistakable at the information booth 100 yards away, silhouetted against the afternoon sunlight that pours in through the windows of the main entrance. Selfishly, I'd hurry across the waiting room, hoping to engage Don in one of the easygoing conversations that I'd normally enjoyed with him in other settings. But it never worked out that way in Station. In Don's words, he worked for Traveler's Aid. His priority was to assist the passerby who came to him feeling weary, harried, confused, and seeking guidance. Whenever someone would sprint into the station dragging a suitcase, late for their train, and unsure of where to go, he'd point them straight to the right track. And as out-of-town visitors straggled in from the bus plaza, the metro rail, or one of the Amtrak or Metrolink trains, wide-eyed and not sure how to get to LACMA or Exposition Park, or wherever else they were, not, they were trying to go, he'd know just which buses they'd need to take, He'd hand them copies of the timetables they needed, and he'd make sure they understood exactly where they would have to make their transfers. To see him at work there was a special joy. He had a virtuosic ability to weave between several conversations at once, giving precise directions to the throngs of people coming and going, while at the same time, indulging whoever else was just hanging around the booth to bask in his gracious humor. The very first time that I met Don was on a Sunday evening in the autumn of 2008 in the parish hall behind the sanctuary. 
I showed up alone at a meeting of the West Adams AA group that Don co-founded. I'd been sober for about 60 days at that time, and I was struggling to regain my footing as I emerged from what had been the lowest point of my life. I felt alienated, frightened, and utterly disappointed in myself for all the bridges I had burned and all of the flimsy promises that I had broken over and over again to myself and to others. I was desperate. I worried that I might be unredeemable. Then I encountered those eyes and that smile. The mercy that Don could transmit with just a handshake and a few comforting words and the sense of relief that would wash over you. It's indescribable. I know many of us here met Don under the same circumstances. If you know, you know. Anyone who spent time with Don witnessed how relentlessly generous he was, often in ways that seemed to contradict common sense. His kindness was a reflex, automatic, without a trace of hesitation. You might have even thought he was reckless with it at times. I certainly did. Many of us learn from a young age to fear and distrust our neighbors to keep our guards up, to think of mercy as some kind of scarce resource that we must conserve, as if we might somehow be squandering our kindness if we were to share it with someone unworthy. Don seemed to regard those attitudes as nonsense. His faith guided him in a different direction. It didn't make a lot of sense to me at first. But over time, I started to understand. Eventually, I realized that no one could really take advantage of Don or waste his goodwill. What you did with Don's kindness was your business, not his. But there was no way that anyone could rob him of it. Because there was always more. Recently, whenever Ash and I would come to church with Don, I used to stare at that mosaic of the sun up there on the ceiling. Then and now, it reminds me of the immense power that flowed through Don, even as his body grew more and more frail. Don resisted flattery, and I can picture him rolling his eyes at me now, waving his hand, and dismissing all of this with some self-effacing retort about a shortcoming he was still struggling to overcome. So I should be clear about what I'm trying to say here today. I don't mean to assert that the compassionate mercy that Don radiated was something that originated within him. I think Don saw himself, rightly and simply, as a vessel for God's grace. What made Don so exceptional was how he cultivated the capacity to channel and transmit that love, that charity, that peace to those around him. That capacity to transmit mercy is not in any way unique to Don. It's inherent in us as human beings. We all share it. The challenge, the inspiration that Don's example presents for us is how much courage and willingness, how much faith we can summon behind it. Those of you who knew Don as a Christian know that he was especially fond of the Epistle of James. If you turn to scripture for solace at times like these, and even if that's not your normal inclination, I'd encourage you to sit for 20 minutes or so 
and read the five chapters of James as you reflect on Don and its life. A lot of things that may have struck you as peculiar and wonderful about Don might come more clearly into focus. I think Don interpreted James's letter as a detailed instruction manual for how to enact his faith in the world. When I read it now, I feel Don's spirit. It leaps off the page in a lot of places. So as we go out of here carrying Don's spirit with us, the closing verses of chapter 3 of James bear repeating. I think Don would be glad for us to find reassurance in these words. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Thank you for everything, Don. We love you. If there is one thing that those of us who are planning this service knew above anything else, there would be one thing we would not do today, and that is to sing the hymn, Amazing Grace. <laughs> Anytime Don would come to a funeral and there would be a, a, an Amazing Grace would be sung here, he'd say, now please, don't sing that hymn at my funeral. If you do, I'll come back and haunt you. So Don, I promise and I will say that we will not sing Amazing Grace today, but I did not promise that I wouldn't preach about it. <laughs> but we found out, uh, Tom let Father Dan know this, that, that it wasn't because of his uh, lack of aesthetics about the hymn or, or not liking it because it was overused or that he just didn't like the tune or whatever it was, but it was a theological reason. He felt that this hymn, Amazing Grace, was too individualistic about God's grace and salvation. That it was really all about all of us and not just one of us. And I think that Don believed in God's amazing grace because he experienced it. Through all the dark times of his life, the times when he felt lost, the, the times when he felt alone and afraid, and especially through the wonderful ministry of, of 12 Steps in AA where he discovered that he was powerless himself to overcome his addiction and require the amazing grace of God to reach out and pull him up and give him new life. And I think that's why the Epistle to James was his favorite uh, book of the Bible. Because the, the main theme of it is, if you believe it, you better live it. I think that the Gospel of Jesus Christ is all about that sense of showing mercy and grace that we hear about in the epistle to James. It's all about inviting and gathering everybody into the family of God. And the people of St. John's experienced that from Don. After his death, so many people said to us, he was the very first person who greeted me who said hello, who, who made me feel welcome, who gathered me in to the community of faith. In our Gospel reading today, it's, it comes from the sixth chapter of, of the Gospel of St. John, 
What we don't hear is the beginning of that chapter. The beginning of that chapter is all about the feeding of the 5,000. You may have heard of that famous miracle where Jesus takes a little bit of food and he makes enough to feed a multitude. And at the end of that story, there's a curious thing that Jesus says to people. He tells his disciples, gather up the fragments so that none may be lost. Gather up the fragments so that none may be lost. And in our reading today, we hear Jesus say that everything that the Father gives me will come to me. And anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me. Gather up the fragments so that none may be lost. And, and I think Don really understood that the work of a disciple was to gather up the fragments, to, to gather up those people who felt that they were lost or least or last. That was the work of a Christian disciple, to, to bring everybody in, to, to gather, to let everyone know that the love of God was so amazing, that grace was so amazing, that it's a message for you and for me, and it has tremendous implications for your life. The Christian vision, it seems to me, is not just about going to heaven when we die. What we're celebrating here is not just you know, a nice thing that maybe has happened now to Don, now that he has, has left this world. No, it's not about that at all. The, Christ, the Christian vision is about what God is doing in the world of a new creation where all of us will be gathered in to the city of God, that wonderful image that appears in the Bible again and again of the city of God. It happens at the end of the book of Revelation. We see it in the book of Ezekiel. Throughout the Bible, the idea of God's city, where the gates are always open, and everyone from everywhere is invited to come on in. What the Bible also tells us about that city and the wonderful mystical vision that it gives is that there is a river that flows through the midst of that city. We hear about it in the psalm today. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. That river in the, in the wonderful mystical vision of the Bible has trees of fruit growing on every side, of just an abundance of life, and, and all the people are invited to come and be part of that, that, to take part of that river of life. Now, Don died late Friday night, and we gathered here on Sunday morning. And we had the wonderful privilege this particular Sunday of baptizing a little one-year-old girl, Elisa. And we went back to that spot back there, and we plunged her down into the water. And that, wonder, that water is a wonderful symbol of that river of life. That that little girl entered into that river of life that Don already is part of and, and, and had been part of. And so when we did that, when we, when we baptized little Elisa, I thought of Don. And I thought, he's still here with us as part of that great procession that great pilgrimage. He's still with us, praying for us, urging us onward as we brought this new one into the life of faith. And I saw that connection between all that had gone before us, all those who had gone before us, and all those here now, and all those who will come after us on that great procession. And we sang a hymn, which we sing at almost every baptism here at St. John's. And that hymn asks a question at the very first line. Shall we gather at the river? It's almost as if, you know, we're, we're all here now, and we're going to be going our separate ways. But when we meet again, shall we gather at the river? Shall we gather at the river where bright angel feet have trod?
And so I invite you today to think about the fact that there will be a day when we will all gather at that river, that we will see and meet one another again on that great getting up morning when the whole earth is renewed and all creation is made whole and new again. So if you, would go, if you turn your programs <clears throat> to the very back and you see the picture of John, and you see the words to that hymn, and I've asked Hillary if she would come and lead us in singing the first verse and the chorus of that hymn, and just think of John asking, making an appointment with us, shall we gather at the river? where bright angel feet that trod. Bring Don to the joys of heaven. Don was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. Don was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother Don. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Don, who was reborn by water and the Spirit and holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. My siblings in Christ, may the peace of the crucified and risen Lord be with you always. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Cathedral and the celebration both of Don's life, his ministry, and resurrection hope. We're so glad that you could all be here today. 
Following the service, there'll be a reception out in our garden. It can be reached through those doors there or the doors at the back of the church. During communion, uh, just follow the usher's instructions and you can come to the broad step here. They'll show you where to go. If you wish to receive a blessing and not communion, just come forward and we will bless you. Just crush your arms like this and we will give you God's blessing. Christ is risen from the dead, the firstborn of all creation.
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in the earth, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and he offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and in peace. And at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Mother of God, St. John, patron of this cathedral church, and all your saints, and to the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and to serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen.
O God, whose days are without end, and whose mercies cannot be numbered, make us, we pray, deeply aware of the shortness and uncertainty of human life, and let your Holy Spirit lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days, that when we shall have served you in our generation, we may be gathered to our ancestors, having the testimony of a good conscience, in the communion of the Catholic Church, in the confidence of a certain faith, and in the comfort of a religious and holy hope, in favor with you, our God, and in perfect charity with the world. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with all who mourn for dawn that casting all their care on you may know, may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Christ is risen. Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.